So in this video, let us now move on to the lesions affecting pons. We have a set of syndromes called as medial pontine syndromes. Based upon at what level the pons is affected, they are further classified as medial superior, medial middle and medial inferior pontine syndromes. But common features which are found in any of these medial pontine syndromes include the involvement of corticospinal fibers resulting in contralateral hemiparesis, involvement of pontine nuclei and fibers of the middle cerebellar peduncles resulting in ataxia and clumsiness, Involvement of medial lemniscus resulting in contralateral hemianesthesia, including the vibratory sensation and the proprioceptive sensations. Involvement of medial longitudinal fasciculus resulting in internuclear ophthalmoplegia, that is the patient will, uh, the person will be unable to look to the side affected. Involvement of abducens nucleus and nerve resulting in lateral gaze palsy. And in some cases, even the facial nucleus will be involved, resulting in facial palsy of the same side. Similarly, we have a set of lateral pontine syndromes. Uh, now again, based upon at what level the pons is affected, they are again classified as lateral superior, lateral middle and lateral inferior pontine syndromes. Uh, lateral inferior pontine syndrome is also known as ICA syndrome, that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome, because it is usually due to the involvement of that artery. So again, the common features which, which are seen in case of lateral pontine syndromes include the involvement of cerebellar peduncles resulting in ipsilateral cerebellar deficits which may result in ataxia or nystagmus, involvement of vestibulocochlear nuclei that will result in deafness and vertigo, involvement of descending autonomic fibers resulting in Horner syndrome features, facial nucleus will be involved even in the lateral pontine uh, syndromes resulting in same-sided facial palsy. Then the involvement of trigeminal and, and spinal lemnisci and maybe even it includes medial lemniscus along with the involvement of spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Now these two structures when they are involved that is trigeminal and spinal lemnisci when they are involved we have loss of pain and temperature sensations in the contralateral half of the body and contralateral face. Uh, involvement of the spinal nucleus and of the trigeminal itself will result in uh, loss of pain and temperature sensation in the ipsilateral half of the face. So these are the symptoms which a patient may present with. Again, as I said in uh, in the video in about video uh, about medulla, all the structures may be involved at once, or it may be just in involving a few of these structures. Now coming to the cranial nerve nuclei involvement in the lesions of pons. If the lesion is at the lower level of pons, then the cranial nerve involvement will be the vestibulocochlear nuclei, which will result in deafness, deafness and vertigo, involvement of facial nerve nucleus resulting in facial palsy of the same side, abducens nucleus resulting in lateral gaze palsy, and spinal nucleus of trigeminal involvement resulting in ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature on the face. However, if the lesion is at the upper level of pons, then motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve may be involved, resulting in paresis of muscles of mastication of that site. Or principal sensory nucleus of trigeminal nerve may be involved, resulting in hemianesthesia of face. This will be for touch and pressure sensations. Or there could be mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve involvement, which may result in absence of jaw jerk. Now, apart from medial and lateral pontine syndromes, the pontine syndromes are also classified as ventral pontine syndromes, dorsal pontine syndromes and lateral pontine syndromes depending upon which part of the pons is involved. So coming to some of the ventral pontine syndromes, we have millard gubler syndrome. This is a classic example of crossed paralysis where the 6th and the 7th nerves as they are emerging uh, at the pontomedullary junction plus the basilar part of the pons will be affected as shown by the area marked orange here. Now, because of the involvement of these structures, the patient will present with ipsilateral facial palsy, ipsilateral lateral gaze palsy and contralateral hemiplegia. So one-sided hemiplegia and opposite side uh, cranial nerve nuclei involvement that is motor cranial nerve nu nuclei involvement resulting in facial palsy as well as gaze, lateral gaze palsy. We also have Raymond syndrome. This is alternating abducens hemiplegia only. So here we have ipsilateral lateral gaze palsy because of the involvement of sixth nerve as it is exiting and 
contralateral hemiplegia because of the involvement of corticospinal tract fibers. Then we have an interesting syndrome known as locked in syndrome. Here the entire ventral part of the uh, that is ventral basilar pons is involved on bilateral sides. So all the descending fibers from the cortex including corticospinal and corticonuclear fibers will be involved here. Now this is at the level of pons. So those fibers which were to relay in midbrain have escaped. Now because all the corticospinal tract fibers are uh, involved in this condition of both sides, the patient will have quadriplegia. Descending fibers to the nucleus ambiguous are involved so that will result in aphonia and anarthria. The patients uh, even the corticonuclear fibers to the facial nerve nucleus is involved therefore the patient will have lower facial palsy. However, patient's reticular formation is not involved which is located much more dorsally therefore patient is completely conscious and he has a normal sleep-wake cycle. What is spared is only the third and fourth cranial nerve nuclei which are located in midbrain and upper half of the face. So the patient can blink and patient is capable of vertical eye movements. So this is the locked in syndrome. He cannot talk, he cannot move but he can communicate only by blinking and vertical eye movements. So that is the locked in syndrome. Now coming to some of the dorsal pontine syndromes, we have Fovillae syndrome. This is also known as EV, uh, inferior medial pontine syndrome. Now here again, 7th nerve, 6th nerve and corticospinal tract fibers will be involved with, uh, with or without involvement of the medial lemniscus. So it almost, the features will almost resemble Miller-Gubler syndrome. Only thing is here, the nuclei are involved, not the nerve. Uh, and additional feature is, along with the abducens nerve nucleus, even the pontine paramedian reticular formation will be involved which is the lateral hor horizontal gaze center and therefore not only the patient will have lateral gaze palsy on the affected side but even his other's eye will be unable to adduct so patient will not be able to look voluntarily to the side of lesion so that is the only way we can differentiate the Fovilla syndrome from the millard kubler syndrome and coming to the lateral pontine syndromes we have Merifoy syndrome or the Gasparini syndrome in case of Gasparini syndrome, we have the involvement of 5th, 6th, 7th as well as 8th cranial nerve and the nuclear involvement. Plus there will be spinal trigeminal and lateral lemnisca involvement. So because of the involvement of 8th cranial nerve and lateral lemniscus, patient will have, I, may, I mean depending upon which of these structures are involved, patient may present with ipsilateral deafness or he may have a contralateral deafness depending upon whether the nerve is involved or the lateral lemniscus is involved. Otherwise, he has lateral gaze palsy, facial palsy because of the involvement of 6th and 7th cranial nerve nuclei and because of the spinal and trigeminal nerve, uh, spinal and trigeminal lemniscal involvement, he will have contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensations both on the body as well as face. Then we have a situation where there is pontine hemorrhage that is with a massive pontine hemorrhage especially which involves bilateral sites. The patient will present with triple P features that is paralysis that patient shows quadriplegia, pinpoint pupils because of the involvement of descending autonomic fibers and pyrexia that is he has got malignant hyperthermia. So when we have a patient combined with quadriplegia, uh, absolutely paralysis of all the four limbs, then pinpoint pupils and, the, uh, and malignant hyperthermia suspect a massive pontine hemorrhage. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can visit this site for other neuroanatomy videos. Thank you.